We're back with uh, Trent Maggot, that's me, and uh, Steve Jensen is filling in for uh, Jeff Beals, uh, my regular co-host. And um, we're lucky to have a, a guest on today, the interim president of uh, Metropolitan Utilities District, Mark Doyle, and he is here to talk about a uh, new compressed natural gas uh, site at 132nd and Cornhusker Road in Sarpy County. Mark, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for uh, dr- discussing this topic. Well, it, compressed natural gas is, is getting more and more popular, we know, and um, one of my, I also had a guest co-host, which is Mark Mitchell, and I remember talking to him near 50th and L Street over at IED Auto Auction and uh, Happy Cab and all his fleet. Uh, was that the first major site for compressed natural gas, and was that a partnership with, with MUD? Yes, uh, that actually, at 53rd and L, that along with... Uh, uh, a station on the back side of our operating center near 63rd and Center were the f- first two natural gas fueling stations in Omaha. But that one was truly uh, more of a partnership. Uh, Happy Cab was the anchor fleet. And as you mentioned, Mark Mitchell, he was a partner of ours, and we're, we continue to work with Mark on that station. And now you have a new a new facility that will be uh, your, your partner's Warner, or is it more uh, MUD by itself? Well, this project is a uh, partnership with four to get it going if you count MUD. MUD on this one, which is a little different than the other two, becomes almost just exclusively the gas provider to this station. We have a a line that's already been out there that can support it. And as you know, utilities are important, and this is no exception. Um, And a meter. Trillium CNG, which is a national... Uh, builder uh, and operator of CNG stations is going to build and operate. They've got over 20 years experience of building stations that can fuel heavy-duty vehicles fast. That's very important. It'll be a state-of-the-art station. Um, The uh, other two partners would be Werner Enterprises. I think everyone knows that Werner is the leading national and international transportation provider. They have, uh, they will be purchasing 10 Class 8 large trucks to be the anchor fleet that provides enough fuel to make the business case for building the station work and everything else just helps the station flourish and be a a a good business project the third partner is uh, truck center companies which we probably know more as omaha truck center Mm -hmm. one of the largest freight liner dealers in the nation they will have a natural gas vehicle service facility where they will sell and service natural gas vehicles, light, medium, heavy duty. So we think it's probably uh, one of the premier projects in the country with the whole the whole deal right there. Will these be over-the-road uh, trucks uh, or mostly local trucks or, or both? Well, CNG is still not prevalent enough to say you can take a truck from coast to coast without thinking twice about it. What's uh, nice about uh, heavy-duty trucking that we learned from Werner is many of those routes are now return-to-base routes. You know, trailers, because it's hard to retain over-the-road drivers, trailers kind of go across the country like the old Pony Express. They go 250 miles out, drop a trailer, pick another one up, bring it back. So these become perfect routes and opportunities for natural gas fueling. Now, will this station be open to the public as well? Yes, it's uh, op- it's open to the public. It will be able to also handle light and medium-duty uh, trucks. There's all kinds of fleets in that area of 132nd and Cornhusker that we've been talking to for uh, several years now. And when we originally started talking to them, it's if we had a station, would you start uh, buying vehicles? Now we get to say it's coming, it's ready. And we have several agreements already that aren't 100% inked, but we think there's going to be a lot of activity just in that corridor. And that becomes an opportunity for businesses. This shows all about economic development. One of the things that the metropolitan area, and specifically Sarpy County, now offers to businesses all over the country is if you're trying to make a decision where to land and fuel is an issue, this is just as big as... Anything else that we use in economic development, whether it's TIF or th- the ability to tell them, here's what we can do for you because natural gas is here. Now, as natural gas, could you put these facilities anywhere where MUD has lines or, or is there certain 
is, are there certain areas that require the the capacity or the or the pressure, or whatever you need to create these facilities? Well, our our distribution system is such that I would say we could almost put them anywhere where MUD has lines. This particular one, it's a forty five pounds per square inch natural gas main. That's not all that unusual. And the gas is delivered to the facility and then it's compressed, stored, and then used uh, to fill the vehicles. So the answer is yes, and that's a significant point because most fuels have to be trucked delivery. This fuel's delivered off the pipeline, so the fuel price is less volatile. The transportation aspect isn't in there. For, uh, as a matter of fact, the commodity price of natural gas at the pump is only about 20 percent, where petroleum fuels is more like 60 percent. So when things occur that might affect the price, they won't affect the price as much with natural gas. Could, could compressed natural gas, you know, we talk about uh, dependency on, on foreign countries and all this kind of stuff. Do we have enough natural gas that if, if the country decided to go that way for mm-hmm. half its vehicles or whatever and grow it that way, do we have a, can we make it fast enough and have it mm-hmm. readily available enough? Yeah, the, the gas supply in the country is very abundant. I think the economists say there's enough gas for 100 years. It's probably more than that. Now, what's, what's occurring now is we have to deal with that product or fuel in a different way. Five or six years ago, it wasn't abundant, and all regulations were built around a fuel that was maybe scarce. Now it's abundant. The pipelines need to catch up with it. You need higher levels of transportation to get it where it is, but the short answer is yes, uh, for a long time to come. Very interesting. Uh, We're talking with the interim president of MUD, uh, Mark Doyle. We appreciate you coming on. And if people want to learn more about this other than the newspaper article, uh, is it on the MUD website? Yes, uh, mudomaha.com. We uh, are ready to discuss any questions, but mainly uh, we're spending our time talking to fleet owners and managers because they're moving this way rapidly. So. Absolutely. It sounds like a great cause. We appreciate it. Um, Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for the time. Really very much appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, You're listening to the Gromaha Radio Show here on KFAB 1110 AM.